how to get your Java code open for extension, but closed for modification. Welcome Java Challenger. And by learning the principles of this video, you're going to be able to create better Java code. And it will also help you to become a highly paid Java developer. I'm Rafael Del Nero, a Java champion. And today I'm going to show you the powerful solid principle OCP, open closed principle. Okay, so now let's explore the concepts of the open closed principle. So what is OCP exactly? It means that the code is open for extension. In other words, we can easily add new features to classes, methods, modules, because we don't need to change the existing code. And close for modification means that we don't need to change the code of a method, of a class, we just need to change the dependencies. So what are the patterns we use OCP? So you're gonna see that we're gonna use interfaces, abstract classes very often when using the OCP principle, because then we can pass the implementation of a method to a class or to another method. And you're gonna see also the OCP principle in the strategy design pattern and in the decorator design pattern. I won't go into those design patterns because it's out of the scope of this video, but I will leave the link of those design patterns explained in the description of this video. So let's see the benefits of OCP now. So the first one is flexibility because the system can grow with minimal changes in the existing code. We have also maintainability because we're gonna have fewer changes in the code and that means fewer bugs as well. And we can easily add new features without impacting the existing code. Your phone is a good example of the OCP principle. Why? Because your phone is open to install new apps. So it's very easy to install new apps, but it's also closed for modification, which means that your operation system can't be changed. Now let's go to the best part. Let's go to the code. Okay, so let's first see the example of a code that's not using OCP. So notice that in this shape class, we have many attributes and we have the variable called type, which means that it could be a rectangle, a circle, and so on. And notice here that we are passing the type and we are using an if condition, which is already not good. So this brings lots of complexity in our code and that makes the code much harder to test as well. And notice here that to calculate the area, we also use a switch case condition. We also use a conditional here. So this is not too good, right? It's a lot of code, difficult to maintain, and we also have the area calculator which we pass a list of shape and then we calculate the area. This code is fine. The problem is this implementation. So to maintain this code is really difficult. Now let's see an example using the OCP principle. You're gonna see how powerful it is. So we have the shape class, which is abstract, and we have the area method, which will be overridden. So the rectangle class will extend shape and notice here that we are passing the width and the height. And then the area is calculated here in a very cohesive way, right? Because this area calculation is only valid for a rectangle. And then we have the circle class and notice that we are also extending shape. And here we have its own implementation. So this is valid only for a circle. So notice how better is the code. So we can easily extend this code, right? So we could add here, for example, a square and we could extend the shape and we could very easily add new features. We could very easily add a new shape. Notice that this is also much easier to test. Imagine if you had to test this it's much more complicated, right? So testing this is much cleaner and it's a much better code design. 
Now let's see the payment example. So let's see first without the use of OCP. And you're gonna notice that it's much more complicated. So notice that this example is similar to the shape example, but I wanted to show you a more close to real world scenario using OCP because we won't use shape uh, usually in a business uh, system. So I'm gonna show you something that is closer to the real world scenario. So let's see here this class payment processor. Notice that we have this method, which could be credit card, PayPal, and so on. And then we do something similar from what we were doing with the shape class. So we have a switch case here and we ask if it's credit card. If it is, we would do a complicated logic here. And if it is PayPal, we would do a complicated logic here. So this code is not good because to start, we would have to pass a string here. That's not good. Imagine if you pass like a capital C, uh, the code would break here. So this is horrible. It's really bad code. And okay, so let's see the other class. Yeah, so notice here now that we have the checkout service and we are instantiating the payment processor and we are passing the string here. So like I said in the previous example, imagine if someone passes here credit card with the capital C, right? It would break the code. So this code is very delicate. It's not good at all. So this is a problem of not using OCP. And then we have the process payment method, which we pass the amount and we receive here the method, which we passed in the constructor. And then we do the calculations according to the payment type. Okay, so let's now see the example of the payment processor using the OCP principle. You're gonna see that's much better. So firstly, we have the payment processor interface, which enables us to use the OCP principle. Why? Because then we can add any payment processor and implement the payment processor interface, which gives us the possibility of passing the payment processor, and then we can process the payment with any payment we want. So I'm gonna show you the code to make this more clear to you. So notice that we have the PayPal processor, which implements the payment processor. And we have here the logic to process a PayPal payment. So imagine we have lots of code here specific for PayPal, right? And then we have another class that is responsible to do credit card payment. And try to imagine here that we have also a lot of code specific for credit card. And notice that we are implementing the payment processor interface. And here on the checkout service, notice that this is so much cleaner, so much better than the mass from the previous code, right? So let's see the previous code again. See how bad this is. It's not flexible at all. And this is very hard to maintain. Imagine creating unit tests on that. We would have to create several ifs in the unit tests. It would be really, really bad to test this code. But here it's much easier, right? Because we only pass the implementation and that's it. So it means that if we want to add a new payment processor, that's very easy. We could simply go here, Java class, and we could add debit, debit processor, and we could implement the payment processor. And that's it. We could implement the logic for debit payment here. And we wouldn't need to change anything in the checkout service because we can simply pass a debit card, right? So notice here in this main class that we are instantiating the credit card processor and we are passing here in the constructor and then we are able to invoke the checkout method. And if we want to do the same for the debit card, we can simply do that. Debit card, debit processor, new debit processor, 
and then we can do the following new checkout service debit processor and then we can put any amount we want here and there you go notice that we didn't have to change the checkout service at all why because this class this service is opened for extension right because we can add any kind of payment but it's closed for modification right so it means that it doesn't make much sense to change things here right so it doesn't mean that we can't change things here at all but it means that if we want to pass a new payment processor it's much easier we just need to add a new payment processor and that's all we need to do okay so let's analyze one example with spring now so i want to show one example not using ocp with spring because it's not necessary i'll just show you a small example here using profiles so profile is basically a way to configure your software your application to do specific things in a specific environment so for example you could pass that you are in the environment of development and you could do something specific for this environment or you could pass the profile of test to do something specific there. So here I'm gonna only show you uh, an example that we wouldn't use really in the real world, but it's just to show you the example of using OCP with profiles, right? So let's see here the first class, message processor, and this is the interface we're gonna pass to our method which will give us the flexibility. So we have the text message processor. And notice here that we are annotating this class as text because it's gonna process a text. So we have a very simple method here, process. So it's the same from this. And uh, we also have the JSON message processor, which has the process method as well. And we are processing JSON message. Okay, so let's see now how we would use the message processor. So notice that one of the greatest advantages of the Spring framework is that the Spring container will manage the instances of our objects, which means that this makes our application more loosely coupled. So we don't need to worry about instantiating message processor manually. Spring will take care of that. So by having our code more loosely coupled, we can make changes in our code more easily. We can add tests more easily and we can add new features more easily as well. And in the end, software will be always more expensive when we maintain the code, right? So that's why this concept of dependency injection and inversion of control. So it means that Spring controls Spring manages the instances for us. It's not us. So this is, obviously it's not the concept I want to teach in this video, but it's useful for you to know this concept as well. So, and keep in mind that this is not an example you would use in a real project. It's just a random example, just to show you how we would use the OCP principle with profiles in Spring. So remember here that we have the JSON class and we have here the profile of JSON and the text processor with the profile of text. So depending on the profile I pass as an environment variable or any other Java uh, variable, the instance will be different, it will be either JSON or text. So let's see how can we do that. So Notice here that if we go to edit configurations, we are passing JSON. So if we run this program, let's see what happens. So yeah, notice that the JSON object was instantiated. But if we change here to text, then text will be instantiated. As you could see in this video, the OCP principle is really powerful and it really makes it easier 
to add new features because you don't need to change the existing code. So your code is much more flexible. But it doesn't matter if you only watch this video, you need to apply the concepts of OCP on your day-to-day -day job. Otherwise, you won't get the visibility you want and you won't grow technically. So you need to apply those concepts whenever you have the opportunity in your day-to-day -day job. And on the 27th of June, I'm gonna be running a live webinar where I'm gonna help you to become a highly paid Java developer in three months. And I'm gonna leave the link here for you to subscribe for free. So I highly encourage you to register in this webinar because this will change your Java career. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there and see you next time.